In this series of Snap Circuits videos, we are going to finally finish up the SC300 series, starting with Project 272, and we're going to go all the way to Project 305. Close the book out. So, Project 272 is the photoresistor control. There's how it is in the book, and there it is on the board. And here we're making use of our two battery packs to make six volts along with our red LED, and we're controlling the LED via our photo resistor here, so we're going to use a little UV light here to adjust the light coming in, that'll adjust our resistance on the LED there, controlling the brightness, so let me turn the switch on. So there's not a whole lot of light coming into the photo resistor at the moment, so the LED is not lit up. But once I start putting some light on that photo resistor, the LED starts turning on. If I get it even closer, it gets brighter and brighter. And again, depending how much light enters that photoresistor, we control the brightness of that LED. So, that's how project number 272 works. Now, project 273 is the microphone control. It's essentially the same circuit, but we change this out for the microphone. So let me take that out. Get the microphone here. Now when we turn the circuit on, See, our LED is actually on full brightness, and the reason is is because I've got the microphone in backwards. Hold on. You have to make sure that the polarity is right. Because there is a positive on there. Okay. That's more like it. So, the LED actually is on. It's a little dim right now, but you can kind of see it pulse when we initially turn it on. And if we kind of make noise on that microphone, we can kind of get it to pulse. And if we kind of blow on it some, if you can see the LED, the LED pulsates a little bit. And so by blowing on the microphone there, making noise around it, we again change the resistance across that microphone, causing the LED to fluctuate there. But it always allows a little bit of current to pass through it, which is why the LED is on, even though it's a little dim. But yes, make sure that the polarity of the microphone is correct, otherwise you're not going to see that effect, like we saw with the LED being bright. It's not supposed to be, if it's reverse polarity. So. That's 273. So now we're going to move on to project 274, the pressure alarm. And here we're looking at project number 274, the pressure alarm. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. Now here we're using again 6 volts, and we've got our variable resistor, our 10 microfarad and 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors here connected to our power amplifier, which then is outputted to our speaker in our red LED. And it's all controlled via our little whistle chip here. Now I will say, for some reason, this project does not seem to work as intended, because I can turn it on here. And you see our little LED flash, and the speaker kind of puts out a little noise, but it's intended to use the whistle chip here to create a small voltage in it which then goes to our power amplifier which then we can both hear and see using our speaker and red LED. But I can mess around with this all day. See, we're supposed to be getting something like that because I'm just tapping these together. But with the whistle chip, 
nothing's quite happening. Maybe it'll work with yours, I don't know. Maybe this is a defective whistle chip, but this project I can't really show but on its intention how it's supposed to work. So, however, Project 275 is the power microphone. And with that, we take our microphone and we replace the whistle chip with it so that we put that on there. And now I'll just blow into the microphone. And when I blow into the microphone, you can hear it through the speaker and see it on the LED because the power amplifier is amplifying the small voltage I'm inducing in the microphone by blowing into it. So that's the kind of behavior that we're expecting from this circuit here. So that's project 275. The next one up will be project 276, the LED fan rotation indicator. Here are project 276, the LED fan rotation indicator. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. Now this looks similar to a previous project we did with controlling motor rotation with the two battery packs press switch and the slide switch and along with the left we also got LEDs in it this time which is going to help tell us the rotation of the motor so if we go to the left side here and use the press switch if I hold that down the motor is turning counterclockwise and we can verify that because the direction of the arrow from our red LED tells us the motor's going in this direction and that one is, is the one that's lit up. Now if we go to our slide switch now the motor runs from this battery pack but the polarity is reversed so now it's running clockwise and we know that from our green LED being lit up which is pointing down this way so now the motor is turning in this direction. Now we can put the fan on the motor to give the motor some load. So we get the fan on there. And now when we use the press switch, the LED doesn't light up, but our two and a half volt lamp there does because the fan is adding resistance to the motor there. So the motor is drawing more current and thus we get it through the lamp now instead of the LED. And the same effect occurs here. When we use the slide switch, and now of course the fan is turning the other direction, and now our 6 volt lamp is lighting up some. Again, there's more current having to go through the motor with the fan on there, so it's being seen through our lamp instead of our LED. Of course we can fiddle around with this. And you can see the direction of the motor changing when we change polarities. Now obviously you can't have these together because otherwise it just flows in a loop like this and nothing goes through the motor. So that's how project number 276 is. Now project 277 is going to be our Space War Sounds with LED. The year of Project 277, the Space War Sounds with LED. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. Now here, we've got our music IC, which is being controlled via our photoresistor. So as long as light's coming into it, the music IC will keep repeating. And that drives our Space War IC, and our output from that goes through the speaker and the LED. So we're not hearing sounds from the music IC, the music IC is just help driving the Space War IC. And we can also manually get sounds out of the Space War IC using our press switch. So if I keep the photoresistor covered up here and I turn it on, our LED lights up and we hear the sounds through the speaker of our Space War IC. And that kept on repeating as long as the music IC was feeding it now since my finger is over the photoresistor, there's not enough light on the music IC's trigger 
to keep the space where I see going. So the moment I let light into it, it's going to keep repeating and continue feeding the space where I see. See, it's already switched to another thing. But as soon as I cover the space, the music I see's photoresistor up, it stops. Now, of course, the press switch will also help control that. But, of course, that overrides it. And now it switched to something else. But it will stay like that as long as light's entering the photoresistor. So that is how project number 277 works. Now, project 278 is the sound mixer. So here we have project 278, the sound mixer. That's what it looks like in the book. Here it is on the board, and now this is a pretty simple circuit. We're just taking our music IC and our alarm ICs and combining both their signals into one output here on the speaker and our light. So when we power on the circuit, we get the music I see playing, but the alarm I see is also playing, and we're hearing that through our speaker, and we're hearing it, or should say, seeing it on our light here. Of course, that's the slide switch acting up there a little bit. But again, the music I see's happy birthday song is being played, the alarm I see's the laser gun effect is being played and both of them are being mixed and outputted on the speaker and visually through our two and a half volt lamp. So that's how project 278 is. Now we're going to move to project 279 which is the sound mixer fan driver. Here is project 279, the sound mixer fan driver. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. Now before, we've got our alarm IC and music IC, but this time they're being controlled separately. The music IC and alarm IC's power is actually coming through our press switch, but the alarm IC has got a separate switch with their slide switch. And we've got our motor with the fan on top. So, if I press the press switch with our slide switch off, See, the music I see plays normally. We see it on our LED and we hear it through our speaker there. Now, if I go over here and I turn on our slide switch and repress the press switch again. See, the music I see is playing, but now the alarm I see is also driving our motor. And we get our red LED as well, but you notice the music I see is quite distorted. And that's because the motor and everything over here is generating some interference and taking power away from the music I see, which makes the music I see sound bad. That's how project number 279 works. Now, project 280 is our electric fan stopped by light. Here we are with project 280, the electric fan stopped by light. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And pretty much we have our Darlington transistor style set up with our PNP and NPN transistors connected together, which is driving our motor. And then to control our resistor, I mean transistor setup here, we've got our variable resistor, which can shunt the resistance around along with our photoresistor. So when we turn the circuit on, the motor obviously is not spinning, or it's just starting to spin now. It's just overcome friction. And move it up just a little bit faster. So we've got the motor just spinning, but as I cover up the photoresistor, the motor speeds up to full power and if I start letting light back in the motor will slow back down and of course I can control the speed 
of the rotor by how much light I get into this photoresistor. And the reason for that is because by changing the resistance through our photoresistor here, we're actually driving the current through this path. Instead of supplying current to the base of our NPN here, which is of course being amplified because we got the PNP and NPN together driving our motor. And so when we cover up the photoresistor, less current goes through there and more of it goes through the base there, which of course turns the transistor on more allowing more current to go to our motor and the motor turns faster and as we decrease the resistance on our photoresistor letting light in then more current passes through this loop less of it goes to the base therefore the transistor doesn't allow as much current to pass through and so our motor slows down so that's how project number 280 works now project 281 is the motor and lamp so we're going to add our 6 volt lamp to the circuit there with our press switch. So let me do that real quick. So here I have project 281, the motor and lamp. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. And so again we got our Darlington transistor set up with our NPN and PNP transistors. And again, which is driving our motor. But we also have our 6 volt lamp with a direct connection that's not through the transistors, it's just a press switch. And then we have our R5 resistor going to the base of our NPN, plus we have our C4 100 microfarad capacitor with the positive here, so that it kind of flows in this direction. So when we first turn the circuit on, you notice there's a delay of about a second or two before the motor powers on, and that's because the capacitor here is actually pulling the charge away from the motor being able to turn on until this charges up. So the resistance of this is very low when the circuit is first turned on and then the capacitor charges up and then once it's charged up the resistance becomes high and then now we allow current to go through our motor. And of course we have our 6 volt lamp and that slows down the motor a little bit. Now with batteries, it's probably more pronounced. Here we're actually using our AC adapter with our B6 accessory, so it, it's not as noticeable with the slowdown here. Now that's how Project 281 works. Now something interesting I found in the book here, and this probably goes back to some things I've said in previous projects about Elenco or Elenco's typos in their books because look what it says here. It says the fan will not move on most settings of the resistor because the resistance is too high to overcome friction of the motor. If the fan does not move at any resistor setting then replace your batteries. Note that this is word for word identical here on the electric fan stop by light because it's talking about the variable resistor. Project 281 there is no variable resistor. It's only resistor 5 and that's constant. So, it may still makes me wonder if some of the reasons some projects don't work or don't come out the way they're supposed to is because of typos in the manuals. So, anyway, this is Project 282 is the next one. It's going to be a start-stop delay. Here we're at Project 282, the start-stop delay. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. Again, like the previous few projects, we're using our Darlington transistor set up with the NPN and PNP transistors driving our motor. And then we've got our photoresistor along with our C4 capacitor and 5.1K and 100K resistors there on the gate of this side of the NPN. So when we first turn the circuit on, our motor goes to full power. And as we cover up our photoresistor, our motor kind of slows down and then it comes back up to speed. I can keep on doing this. So 
And what's happening is, is we're affecting the charge in our C4 capacitor here by changing the resistance on our photoresistor, allowing it to pass charge through it or discharge it entirely. And by doing that, we affect, of course, the current on the base of our NPN transistor, which then consequently affects our PNP and ends up affecting how the motor operates. And we can do this to a greater extent if we shine a light on there. Because now that we've put so much light on there, now we've really changed the dynamics of the capacitor to where the motor completely stopped and had to get the capacitor back up to where it would actually be able to start the motor again. If I just take the light away, it will affect it. So that's how Project 282 works. Now we're going to move on to Project 283, which is the mail notifying system. So here we are with Project 283, the mail notifying system. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And it's a relatively simple circuit. We have our red LED that's being controlled via our NPN transistor. And the control for that comes through our photoresistor. And then we have our green LED, which just stays constant. So if we have light shining on our photoresistor like so, we have our circuit powered up. You see our green LED is on, but our red LED is not. If the light is taken away, the red LED comes on nice and bright because the photoresistor takes the current away from the base of the NPN transistor not allowing our red LED to turn on but as soon as it's taken away then the LED can come on because now we've got this path for our base current and our green LED is constant all the time so their setup for this is that you would put the green LED and the photoresistor in the mailbox facing each other. So it would be kind of like that. And then when you get mail, it would separate them and then turn on the red LED. That's what it has in the book. So that's pretty much essentially how Project 283 works. Now Project 284 is going to be our mail notifying electronic bell. So here we are with project 284, the mail notifying electronic bell. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. And so now we're going back to six volts. So we got our two batteries. We got a similar setup before with our photoresistor and green LED, the green LED staying constant. Then our NBN and PNP transistors are stuck together and their output is going to our speaker here along with our LED but we have our C2 capacitor connected along with the base of our NPN. So we're kind of creating a little bit of a resonant frequency that we're going to hear from our speaker which kind of acts as our electronic bell. So like the mail notifying system, if there is light coming through on the photoresistor that no sound will come out of the speaker there. However, it's interesting that our LED stays lit up. Of course, we get our green LED as before. And when we start to break the light there, we get this electronic noise from our speaker, which kind of does vary with the photoresistor here. But the general idea is if it either is fully closed or if it's got light on it. And again, it's our resident frequency being generated through our capacitor and everything there, making our electronic bill. So, that's Project 284. Now, Project 285 is the mail notifying electronic lamp. And the only change we're going to do there is take our 6-volt lamp and put it in place of our speaker. So let me get that part of the speaker there off. Take that off. There, put our lamp in place, put our LED back, put our four strip across, and turn our circuit back on. 
like before. Nothing happens. Green LEDs on or red LEDs on. As soon as we take our light away and we cover it up, our six volt lamp now turns on. And kind of like the speaker, depending on how covered the photoresistor is, we can kind of control the brightness of that lamp. That's how project number 285 works now. Project 286, we're going to be looking at the twice amplified oscillator. So here we are with project 286, which is the twice amplified oscillator. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And again, it's an oscillation circuit making use of our amplifier providing a feedback loop. And so we've got our output going back through our C2 capacitor, but of course it's also controlling our PNP transistor, which is going to allow us to power our speaker and hear the output. So if we power it up, again, it kind of starts off and kind of dissipates, so bring that near the speaker so you can hear it. So it's an oscillating circuit there, and you can hear it with the with all the pulses and we can modify this by changing it for a different capacitor like the 0 0.02 number one and now it sounds different so again by changing the capacitance we change the oscillation frequency and of course the human body acts as a capacitor too. If we can hear that. And see, I don't even have to be connected to the circuit for that. So that's how Project 286 works. Now Project 287 is the quick flickering LED. So for that we take our speaker out and put our red LED there and then we can go back and take our capacitor number two for instance and put it back into the circuit there and we should see that eventually start flashing because the amplifier is a little flooded right now from using my body and whatnot so let's see if we can get that going here Oscillation started. Mm, what's going on with our LED here? Now you see with our C2 capacitor, our LED is now flickering there at the oscillation. And again, like before, we can change that with capacitor C1. However, the oscillation is so fast with C1 that it kind of looks like it's constant to me instead of flickering like it was previously when we had C2 on there. And like before, I could take my finger and also cause it to turn on, creating a resonance oscillation. So, that's project 287. Now, project 288 and 289, we're going to be looking at both, is the AM radio with transistors. So here we are with project number 288, the AM radio with transistors. And there it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And it is a pretty sophisticated circuit because there's a lot of resistors being used. There's a lot of capacitors in places being used. 
We got our NPN transistor. We got our high frequency integrated circuit. Variable capacitor, our antenna, which is inductor, our speaker output, using it all on 6 volts here. So there's a lot going on with this circuit. So we get our antenna input for our AM radio signals through our antenna. Our variable capacitor allows us to fine tune the frequency that it's on. I know it's kind of out of camera shot here. There. And of course, our variable resistor is using our transistor controls here to amp kind of amplify the signal so we can hear it through our speaker there. Again, kind of using our Darlington setup with our NP and VNP, but it's got a lot more sophistication with all the resistors and capacitors. So, turn it on here. And our variable resistor allows us to adjust the amplitude of the signal so that we can hear it through our speaker so it's all the way up. And I found it helps to kind of put my hand right here because I need to deflect the signals to kind of bounce into the antenna there so we can actually hear them trying to tune it. Let me see if I can find one station here. There's one right there. See if I find another one. It's a little more clear. Now let me go back to that one that I found. Again, I'm trying to help deflect some of these signals. Try not to get on capacitance wall there. Yeah, you can probably at least hear that station coming in there. I'm just trying to keep it on here. So that's how project number 288 works. Now we're going to move on to project 289, which is the second iteration of the AM radio without the transistors. So here we are with project number 289, the AM radio version 2. And there it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And this one is much more simplified because all the amplification and filtering that we had using transistors is all being taken care of now by the power amplifier. However, we don't have the variable resistor, so the volume output is fixed. So we turn it on, and it comes like normal. Now, I've left it pre-tuned to the last radio station we were getting with the previous project, so all i got to do is get it to hear it now. Obviously, we're in commercial break now. So that is project number 289. The next one I'm going to look at is the music amplifier. So here we have project number 290, the music amplifier. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And here we just got our music IC set up, and its output goes into our power amplifier, so it makes the output sound from the music IC louder than if we used it alone with the speaker and not the power amplifier. So if we turn the circuit on, we get the music playing, and it's playing nice and loud because of that power amplifier and we get our visual and it's going to keep on repeating as long as we got that hooked up 
And because it's loud, I'm going to turn it off early. But you get the general idea. So that's what Project 290 is. Now Project 291 is the delayed action lamp. So here we are with Project 291, the delayed action lamp. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. Now I did add this a little short here, and we'll see why that's there in a moment. But we've got our CM2 transistor setup, which is driving our 2.5 volt and 6 volt lamps connected together here in series. And we've got our base connected through our press switch resistor, and we've got our 100 microfarad capacitor here as well. So we turn on the circuit, nothing happens, because the base of the transistor is not energized to turn on our lamps. So we press the press switch. You notice our lamps took a little while before they turned on, and that's because it was also charging this capacitor, so the capacitor was taking most of the current initially. As the capacitor charged up, more went through the base of the transistor, allowing our two lamps to turn on. Now if I let the press switch go, you notice both lamps are still staying on. And as time progresses, those both lamps will slowly get dimmer and dimmer until they go completely out and the reason for that is now the capacitor is using its stored charge and is supplying power to the base of the NPN transistor and is discharging in this loop now and as it discharges less and less current goes through the base so the transistors turn on less and less and therefore our two lamps get dimmer and dimmer until the capacitor is completely drained, in which case no more current can be passed through those transistors. And that's why I had the short here, because I can drain the capacitor very quickly. And we can just repeat the process like so. And then discharge instantly. So that's how that circuit works. And we've seen some circuits like that in previous projects. Now project 292 is the delayed action fan and with that we remove our two and a half volt lamp we'll take our motor positive side up it connects like that and we put our fan on and you can probably guess what's going to happen with this using our fan instead. So we power on the circuit and nothing happens like before because there's nothing going through the base of the transistors to turn them on. Press the press switch. And our motor spins up and our 6 volt lamp comes on. And like before, when we release the press switch, the motor and 6 volt lamp stay on because our 100 microfarad capacitor is providing the current through the base of the transistor to keep them on. However, you can hear the motor slowing down as the capacitor discharges, not allowing the transistors to stay on and provide as much current. So, our lamp is getting dimmer, our motor is getting slower and slower. And of course, I can instantly discharge the capacitor like that and start it again. and discharge it quick like that. So that is how Project 292 is. So the next one is Project 293, the Police Siren Amplifier. So here we are with Project 293, the Police Siren Amplifier. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. And it's very much like the Music Amplifier Project. The only difference is, is that we've got the alarm IC. So we still have our red LED providing input along with our amplifier IC amplifying the signal so it comes out loudly on the speaker there. So we turn the circuit on. And again we get the police siren and we can see our LEDs on and it's nice and loud because again the power amplifier has amplified the signal. And so it's a louder, louder output than if we had just used the speaker directly off of the alarm IC. So that is project number 293, so project 294 will be the lasting doorbell. So here we are with project number 294, the lasting doorbell. There is the circuit, and look, and there it is on the board. 
Here we're making use of our two transistors coupled together again with the output going to our speaker, but we're making use of our whistle chip as well to provide the audio signal that we hear from the speaker. Coming of course with our resistors, we got our press switch and our 100 microfarad capacitor, which probably explains why it's called a lasting doorbell. So we have the circuit turned on and nothing's happening, but yeah, let's say we press the door, we press the button. That provides power to the transistors, which turns the speaker on, but then it also charges up our capacitor. And you hear it starts off with a whine, and then it's getting lower and lower as that capacitor discharges. And when the capacitor is fully discharged, it pretty much goes completely out. We can, of course, make it happen again. So it starts off loud, goes back down, down, and down. Again, this capacitor is discharging through our transistors and is creating an oscillation using the whistle chip, and that's what we hear out of our speaker. So. Now, project. 295 is the lasting clicking, and all we do for that is we take our 10 microfarad capacitor and put it on top of our whistle chip. And as we know from previous projects, when we put capacitance across the whistle chip like that, it alters the frequency of the sound coming out of the speaker. So I'll try to set it back on. If we energize it now, we hear this clicking from the speaker and it's getting progressively slower and slower again as that 100 microfarad cap discharges see it getting slower and slower I can charge it up That's how it is. Now, of course, the interesting thing we can do... See, that was about discharged. The other interesting thing we can do, even though it's not in the book there, is we can still use our other capacitors, like our 0.1 microfarad. Just for fun, we can put it across the whistle chip as well. And, of course, it will change the frequency of the audio coming out of the speaker, making it lower. And now it kind of sounds like a plane. So, even though it's not in the book, that's a fun thing you can do with using your capacitors across the whistle chip like that. So, that's 295. The next one we're going to look at is 296 quieting a motor. So here we have project number 296, quieting a motor. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. Essentially, we have our motor coupled in series with our speaker here activator with our press switch. And then we have our 470 microfarad capacitor in line that we can connect or disconnect with our slide switch out of the circuit. So when we hold down our press switch, our motor comes on, but you can hear noise through the speaker as the motor is running. And so we're getting all this electrical disturbance through the circuit there because the motor is very quickly connecting and disconnecting the contacts there on the brushes and we're getting that connection and disconnection as electrical noise that we're hearing through our speaker. Now if we turn on our slide switch and connect our 470 microfarad capacitor in line with the circuit, the noise pretty much goes away. And if we take the capacitor back out of the circuit, the noise comes right back. And, you know, this is why in cars, your ignition system is a prime source of electrical noise in a car. So usually there's a capacitor or two coupled with your vehicle's ignition system because of all that sparking 
which is a connection and disconnection just like a motor. And because of that, you get electrical noise and things like your radio when you're listening to your radio. And so there'll be capacitors coupled with your ignition system or even coupled with the radio to help filter out that electrical noise. So that's the purpose of having a capacitor in a circuit like this. So that's project number 296. And 297 is our transistor fading siren. So here we are with project 297, the transistor fading siren. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. So we've got our alarm IC going out to our speaker and we've got our two transistors coupled together in a Darlington setup like we've seen before that controls the input feed to our alarm IC with our capacitor and our press switch controlling the input for those transistors. So we turn the second out and nothing happens because we haven't charged up this cap or given any power to the transistor. So press the button and our siren plays as normal and when I let go of it the siren continues playing but that capacitor is discharging And you hear the sound kind of go away and it kind of trickles away as the capacitor completely discharges and no longer providing enough current to our alarm IC. So that's essentially how project number 297 works. Now 298, we're going to modify it because that's the fading doorbell. And we're going to replace this with our music IC. So let me swing these away. Put our music IC in its place. There's some resonant sound there, but anyway, the music I see is going to play its sounds now through the speaker instead of the alarm I see, but it will have the same decaying effect because of our 10 microfarad capacitor there providing the current to our base of the transistors there. Yeah, it kind of sounds like one of those sad things you might see in a cartoon or something when something doesn't work out or whatever. So, it's the same effect as Project 297, but it's using the music I see. Again, our capacitor supplies the current to the base of the transistor, allowing them to turn on, so it supplies current to the IC, but as the capacitor discharges, less and less current flows through the transistors, therefore less and less current gets to our IC, and it just kind of dies out until it completely goes out. So that's Project 298. Project 299 is our blowing space war sounds. So here we are with Project 299, the blowing space war sounds. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we get our space for IC that's outputting to our whistle chip and our 6 volt lamp and its input is being controlled via both our microphone here and I changed this capacitor up to a 470 microfarad from the 100 they have because the effect is able to work longer on the project here. So when we turn it on We obviously get the Space Force sounds, and you see that our light is lighting up, and our whistle chip is giving the sound output. Now, if I blow into the microphone, it changes the Space Force sound to something else. Now, see, the capacitor is starting to get charged up. That's why it's going out like that. So, that's pretty much how Project 299 works. As you blow into the microphone, you change the 
resistance across there and changing the space for IC, but it also kind of has a limited time that it runs because of the capacitor here that you're fighting with. So, the next one is Project 300, the Adjustable Time Delay Lamp. Here is Project 300, the Adjustable Time Delay Lamp. There it is at the book, and here it is on the board. Now, this is a variation of one of the previous projects, the Delay Action Lamp. At this time, we're making use of our variable resistor in there to now change the resistance of how quickly this capacitor discharges after we release the press switch, and that determines how long our lamps stay lit based on, again, how much charge is being dissipated from the capacitor through our resistors on the base of our transistors there. So we have the variable resistor all the way up, so that is the max delay on there. So we turn it on. We let go of the switch, the lights stay on for a little while, and again, as the capacitor discharges, less and less current goes through the base of the transistors, and therefore, less current ends up going through the lamps. Now, if I put the variable resistor all the way to the bottom, well, that's the minimum delay, and so, we power on the circuit, it stays on, let it go, and then go out pretty quick, because again, we've shunted more of the power through here than when we had it all the way there. So we again change the resistance. We can put it around the middle and have it about 50-50. And then they go out about 50%. So again, just a variation on a previous project using the variable resistor to control the delay on there by adjusting the resistance. Now Project 301 is the adjustable time delay fan. Again, another variation of the previous project. Where we take our 2.5 volt lamp away and we're going to replace it with the motor and fan. So, take positive this way. Fan on there. And we'll put it up for the max delay. And power up the circuit. Now our 6 volt lamp comes on, and our fan comes on. And when I release the button, they stay running for a little while, and then they slowly go out again as the capacitor discharges. Go to the minimum delay. And fan and lamp power up, as long as I hold the button. As soon as I take it away, they die out pretty quick. Yeah, we can put it about halfway mark and it'll stay up for about 50 percent so that is project 301 oops I accidentally put the camera here all right on to the last page project 302 adjustable time delay lamp 2 So here we are with Project 302, the Adjustable Time Delay Lamp 2. There's the circuit in the book, and here it is on the board. And again, this is a variation on the previous projects. This time, instead of using the capacitor with the variable resistor to adjust how much it discharges in a loop to ground, what we've actually done is we're using the variable resistor to adjust how much current goes into the base of the transistor versus how much it just goes again to ground when it was discharging. So this has got a different effect on how the circuit behaves. So it's already turned on, we've got it all the way to the right, so it's shunting as much as it can into the base. So our light lights up. Well, there you go, and I will mention we're using the big 470 microfarad capacitor here. So you see our light goes out after a few seconds, starts off nice and bright and then goes out. And again, our capacitor is discharging through the base of it through our 100 ohm resistor here and variable resistor. Now if we shunt this all the way to the left, well then that creates a lot of resistance into the base there. Now we press the switch, our lights, 
our light is still nice and bright because of our Darlington transistor setup here. But when I release the press switch, the lamp stays on for quite a bit longer because there's more resistance on the base of the NPN there. So it takes longer to discharge the capacitor through that. But it has a secondary effect too that the reduced amount of current going to the base actually means that the lamp gets dimmer and dimmer. But if we start shunting more to it, you see, we can brighten the lamp back up because we've added additional resistance there with the variable resistor and by adjusting it we can provide more current to the base while it's still discharging the capacitor. So that's how project 302 is. Now project 303 is adjustable time delay fan 2. You probably guess what we're going to do there. Where we're going to replace the lamp with the motor. So start off all the way to the right there on the variable resistor. And now the fan, I, fan runs nice and strong, we release it. It runs on for a few seconds and then dies out. Now we're going to bring the variable resistor all the way to the left this time. And press the press switch, our motor comes on nice and strong. Release the press switch. And the motor's slowing down, but it's taking more time to slow down. Because it's not draining the capacitor through the base as quickly with the variable resistor all the way to the left. Thereby that allows our motor to stay on longer. And just like the lamp before, we can adjust this variable resistor to start shunting more current to the base, and that will speed the motor back up. But of course, it will cause the capacitor to discharge faster until it's completely drained out. So that is project 303. Project 304 is the watch light. So here we are with project 304, the watch light. There it is in the book and here it is on the board. And we're making use for the couple of resistors and our NPN and PNP trans transistors, but you notice they're not stacked on top of each other, they're actually separated by a 100 ohm resistor. And again, we're controlling our 2.5 volt lamp there at the end of the PNP. But the NBN is still amplifying the signal to its base. And we got our 100 microfarad capacity here acting as our delay. And we press our press switch. The light stays on as we'd expect. And when I release it, the light stays on nice and bright for a few seconds. And then it immediately starts going out. And what's happening is, of course, our capacitor is still discharging through the NPN, but because of this 100 ohm resistor there, it actually doesn't start to cause this to dim until this has discharged a fair bit. And then this extra resistance here starts to matter, and then we see it dimming down. So right now it's just running from the press switch. When I let it go, capacitor starts discharging through here but it's not affecting the PNP that much until it gets down to a certain point at which then we get less current through the base here and that causes it to dim. Now project 305 is the delayed bedside fan. And like you'd expect, we take our lamp off and we replace it with our motor. So we'll put the motor here, put our fan on it. Powered up, our fan runs nice and good. 
release the switch, it runs on high for a little bit. And then after a few seconds, it starts going out. And do it again. Runs for a few seconds. And then starts decaying out. And that concludes Project 305 and the entire book, because that was the last one for the SC300 series. So we are done with that set. But we're still far from done with Snap Circus, because we got a whole other book to go here. This is for the SC500, Projects 306 to 511. So here we are with project number 293, the Police Siren Amplifier. There it is in the book. Here it is on the board. And pretty much like project 290 with the music amplifier, is the exact same circuit setup, but this time we're using the alarm IC instead of the music IC to provide the output. So, like before, it's going to go through our power amplifier, it's going to make it louder through our speaker. And we'll have a visual indication with our red LED there. So we turn the circuit on and we get the... Whoops. Well, that was kind of a blooper. That was kind of...